How's it going everybody? Ed Ricker here and I'm talking today about Real Steady Go, the stabilization software for GoPros. How to use it, why to use it, when to use it. Uh, this is not to be confused with Real Steady for After Effects. That's a more expensive and more comprehensive use uh, software. We're just talking about the standalone Real Steady Go for 99 US dollars. Available in the video description. This video is not sponsored or partnered with them. I just like the software. Now, first off, GoPro does have in camera stabilization. It's called HyperSmooth. And the newer GoPros, like the 8 and the 9, have like HyperSmooth 2.0 and, and Boost and all this stuff. And that may be fine for your uses, but it's not perfect and it doesn't smooth things out to quite the degree that maybe Real Steady Go does. Rather than hyper smooth applying stabilization in real time, Real Steady will actually take the recorded gyro data from your recorded GoPro video clip and allow you to affect stabilization in post-production. It's pretty awesome and it makes some pretty impressive results. Not always perfect, but still tweakable and I like that. So first of all, let's talk about how to prepare to use Real Steady. You can't just put any clip into Real Steady. First of all, it's got to be unstabilized GoPro footage. HyperSmooth cannot be applied to that GoPro clip. If it is applied to it beforehand and you have selected that in camera before you recorded the clip, then Real Steady Go will show an error message and you are out of luck. You cannot use Real Steady Go with that particular clip. Second of all, shoot in 4x3 mode because what Real Steady will do is export out a 16 by 9 aspect ratio video clip. Now that's assuming that you want to have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio final product, which most of us do. Uh, if you put in a 16 by 9 clip into Real Steady, it will spit out a much more wider cinematic aspect ratio that might look out of place amongst the rest of your footage. So if you put in 4x3, out comes 16 by 9. It must also be at least 25 frames per second. But you, normally what I do is shoot in 30 frames per second. That way I'm going to be shooting in 4K, 4 by 3 30 frames per second, and that's the best look I can get out of my GoPro footage when I'm attaching it to an FPV drone. Which, by the way, the majority of these clips, in fact, I think all of them that I will be using in this demonstration, are clips from a GoPro on an FPV quad. Also, make sure that your GoPro's GPS functionality is disabled. If it's enabled and it's unable to find any GPS satellites for one reason or another, it could affect the way that Real Steady reads your gyro data. I don't know why, but it happens. The last thing you have to remember is to use the appropriate GoPro or the appropriate soft mount if you don't have the appropriate GoPro. And what I mean by that is something is weird with the Hero 5 and the Hero 7 GoPros. Their gyro data doesn't mesh well with Real Steady Go. Not sure why. You can use soft mount options, like extremely, extremely soft mount options to kind of isolate that gyro data so it doesn't get corrupted and, you know, then uh, messes up with Real Steady. For some reason, GoPro Hero 6, uh, 8, and 9 all work just fine with Real Steady, but, but 5 and 7 do not. I don't get it. But anyway, that's the case. So if you have a 5 and a 7, and this also goes for a Session 5, you have to soft mount that thing to oblivion. Last month, I visited Sean Oz, and I took a lot of FPV quads, some GoPros, and got an awesome, a lot of awesome shots of the mountainscapes and the streams, the rivers, the frozen lakes, whatever out there. It was really cool. And so I want to use one of those clips to show you how to use uh, Real Steady with something like this. First of all, you can see it's kind of bouncy. Um, it's not extremely smooth footage. It's in 4x3 aspect ratio, and you can actually see part of my GoPro mount on the lower left of the video clip. And just, it, it doesn't look that smooth. Uh, we can do a lot better. Now, if we were shooting this with hyper smooth, we probably could have got a, a good you know, product out of this. But we're going to import this into uh, Real Steady Go, and I'll show you what it looks like. We're in Real Steady right now, and obviously I've already gone through the software activation because I own it. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and load a video right there on the left. And then we're going to click uh, this one, uh, 12450, which I believe is the clip that we just saw and we're going to click open. So this is a clip that has not had HyperSmooth applied to it. This has, um, you know, just 4x3 unstabilized 4K footage in 30 frames per second. The beauty of this is that we can uh, basically fine tune this, this stabilization. If we had HyperSmooth already applied to it, we're kind of stuck with what GoPro gave us in camera while we were recording. Whereas here we can adjust just how we want that stabilization to look. Um, so it's, it's going to start 
playing kind of like in half speed the clip. And this is me walking over to the bridge, setting down my drone, uh, you know, test arming and everything. So what we can actually do is isolate what we want to use. I'm hitting stop, um, spacebar to stop and start the video. On the bottom we see our play bar and we have these little constraint tools to slide back and forth in order to cut the clip down so we don't have to stabilize the entire clip. It's me walking over over to the bridge, putting down the quad, getting myself situated. We don't want to have to stabilize all that and just waste time. So as we're playing along, we're kind of scrubbing through the video, we can see, ah, there's where we actually take off. So if I kind of scrub back, right there, we're still on the ground. I'm going to take this tool and just cut all of that right to the playhead. And then at the very end, we're going to kind of scrub all the way to the end and see at what point do I land? Right about there. So I land right there. I'm going to uh, kind of nudge this all the way over. And there's our clip from beginning to end with uh, the stuff kind of cut out that we don't even really care about, you know? At this point, we could actually save the video and it will start working, but let's see what we can do to customize the smoothness. We're going to go down to the gear icon, lower right, and up comes the advanced settings. So you have your smoothness, your cropping speed, and your utility. Um, basically, smoothness is just how smooth do you want it. And normal is usually pretty darn smooth. I never go higher. That's going to crop in more. So as it gets more smooth, it crops in in order to do that. Uh, I don't think I would really ever do that unless my footage was atrociously, you know, all over the place. Um, if anything, I would go less so I get more of my field of view back. But let's keep it on normal. I, I usually always keep it on normal. And then um, cropping speed, you can have it linked with smoothness or not. So cropping speed is how much it's going to punch in in order to become smooth if for some reason that camera really starts jerking around a lot. So the, the program will crop in in order to smooth out the footage and how fast does that cropping happen? Again, I just have it on normal. I don't mess with much else. Um, lock horizon would be if you want that horizon to stay level. Uh, again, that would probably be a, a, an additional crop in some situations. And then, of course, your time lapse. So if you had a GoPro that was running a time lapse, you might use that and then it knows what to do with that footage. But since I'm using it with the uh, FPV drone, I would not use the time lapse function. And in fact, I don't think I ever have. Um, and then finally on the bottom, in the utility, flip gyro data. So if you had the, uh, the GoPro mounted up underneath the quad or the drone or, you know, whatever else, your helmet, whatever you're using this with, you would flip the gyro data accordingly. And then sync points. So with the Hero 8 and the Hero 9, it's not such a big deal. But with older GoPros, it's good to use a sync point. And if I check that, I just, I, I put a check mark in there and hit, click OK going to run through the numbers again of the clip and it's going to add sync points. And a sync point is basically where you want that gyro data to sync up with the video because uh, over time it might get out of sync and then it might not be stabilizing properly. So a good place to sync your gyro data would be when the GoPro is moving in a straight line like say this right here. There's no left right rolls, there's no start stop, and it's all moving in one direction very smoothly. That might be where you would put a sync point. So if we click right there, uh, right where we're going straight with no movement really, we can stop with the space bar, click this little button, and add ourselves a sync point. Uh, now, I'm not going to do that because this is a GoPro Hero 8, shouldn't need it, but also if you look all the way to the right, it already created a sync point for us where it thought we might want one. Well, you, you want to know what happened at that point? Let's see. That is where the drone landed and it sensed vibration. Or sometimes maybe if you're flying an FPV quad and you bump into something or you crash, it might treat that as an automatic sync point. I'm not sure exactly why, but either way, that's not a prime place to put a sync point. What you'd want to do is get rid of a sync point that was automatically created due to a bump or vibration and instead put your sync point in a, a nice, smooth, forward-moving instance of the, uh, the, the clip. And that should be your best place for that. Now, that sync point that we just placed was toward the beginning of the trimmed clip. You would also put one toward the end. 
Uh, and especially if you have any other issues, you might add another sync point too, but usually one at the beginning or toward the beginning and toward the end of the clip should be enough. Once you've made your sync point, you can right click it and either delete it if you made a mistake or click adjust. Once you're in the adjust window, it kind of goes through this uh, repeating sort of segment of the clip. And this allows you to adjust your sync by dragging this back and forth and either making it better or making it worse. Uh, right now, actually, if I go back and forth, there's not really a change. And I think that's because, you know, the GoPro 8 didn't really need a sync point to begin with. But as I'm scrolling through this or, or you know, moving this around, if you have like a GoPro 6, or something like that, you might see it get worse or better depending on where you have the slider. You can also hit the Z key on your keyboard and then zoom in by dragging and kind of see the detail of the clip a little bit better. And that way, as you adjust the sync point, you can really see what you're affecting that much clearer. But again, I'm gonna go back to advanced settings, take use sync points off, click OK to get rid of sync points because I don't need them. I have a GoPro 8. It's going to run the numbers one more time. And then at this point, we have our ins and our outs. We can hit save video. Click save and it says output video will not contain audio because trim handles are set. So we've already set our trim handles and that's the term I probably should have used earlier. Uh, we're going to click OK. That means that when it takes this footage and it exports it out, there's going to be no audio in that clip. If you want to have the original audio, you can use the audio from the, uh, the raw clip, the unstabilized clip, because this is going to be creating a second clip next to it. The second clip is also sometimes bigger than the first in terms of file size. And so anyway, it's going to render, it's going to play through the entire thing at about half speed or maybe a third of the speed. Now, while it's doing this, um, you could start another instance of real steady. So I'm going to go into real steady go and I'm going to get a, a new uh, window and I'm going to load in another clip and I'm going to do the same thing. Here at this point though, you do run the risk of just bogging down your system. So if you need to leave the house or you want to go to sleep and have a few of these running, that's cool. But I think if you're running more than two at any given point in time, you're not really saving time. Now that's for running more than one instance on one computer, but say you have multiple computers, like I have this computer, but I also have a laptop upstairs. Can I use Real Steady Go with both? Well, technically not at the same time. You do have an activation license you get when you buy the product, but you have to activate one or the other, and they require an, inter an internet connection to do so. So if I'm down here and I'm using Real Steady Go, and then I go upstairs and use my laptop, it's going to say it's not activated. Please enter your activation license. You do that, and then down here, it's going to say, oh, it's not activated. You got to activate your license. So it's one or the other. Now, there will be times where you want to use HyperSmooth over Real Steady. For instance, when I was chasing my friend Shelby Vol with his FPV wing, I opted for HyperSmooth because I thought it looked more natural. At the pace that we were flying, it made a lot more sense to kind of show those banks and those turns and those micro movements a little bit more than say hyper smooth, which would have been very much more robotic looking stabilization that may not have looked quite as natural and kind of got the feeling of the chase, the excitement of the chase. This smooths things so much that sometimes it almost becomes um, impersonal, like it, it becomes almost surgical in nature. It's, it's too perfect sometimes. There's also times where uh, it creates more of a fisheye look. So GoPro is already kind of wide to begin with. And when you use this, sometimes those panning movements really accentuate just how fisheye things are getting. And it becomes a little bit distorted and, and almost nauseating to look at full screen. So there have been times where I've shot real steady and kind of regretted using it for certain movements. Um, however, for other movements, it would be awesome. And so if in a professional setting where you need to get the shot perfect or you're trying to get like shots of nature or something where it's no longer about the pilot's ability that you're showing off, but rather the subject that you're showing off, then real steady starts to become more of an appealing choice. The nature shots that I took in, in Colorado with real steady just look absolutely amazing to me. There are a couple times where I am moving, like panning and yawing a little bit and it doesn't look quite so good and I might be tempted to cut those instances out. But when I'm moving straight forward or banking slowly, it becomes amazing. 
So it just finished rendering. It says rendered movie saved as. So you go basically to where the original file is on your computer and it saved it right next to it. So we're gonna open up uh, Windows Explorer here. And here it is. It's um, 12450 uh, underscore smoothed. And very smooth. It's still in a flat color profile. I have yet to grade this particular clip, but you can see what it's doing. And as you move, but you don't turn, you will see that it kind of zooms in on the image. And it's kind of interesting how it does that. And I'll show you in a second here. But as I'm moving forward, you'll see at some point when I stop moving left and right and I raise up, it, the image almost zooms in. Right about here, it starts to kind of zoom in. And that's kind of a byproduct of Real Steady 2. And you might be able to minimize that by lowering the smoothness a little bit. But there are some times like right there where that's the cropping speed kind of trying to do something with the footage. Same if you're just kind of sitting there on the ground uh, and you apply Real Steady before you've taken off or started moving with the GoPro, it might also start cropping in. And that's kind of a strange look. You know, you're not actually moving the camera but Real Steady is applying some sort of movement thinking that's what it needs to do. Anyway, Real Steady Go does have a trial version. However, you can't really get by using it. It gives you a big watermark. It says demo, 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 demo all across the screen, but it gives you a taste of you know, how it would work and whether it is going to work with your GoPro. So if you do have a Hero 5 or Hero 7 and you're wondering if your mount is gonna suffice, if it's soft mounted enough, you can actually check it and see. This video is not sponsored or you know partnered with Real Steady. I just like to use the software. I also generally like to tell you, I like to disclose that I'm using the software because there are a lot of times where you might put out a video clip with Real Steady and you don't say you use Real Steady, and then some people think that's cheating because you're kind of smoothing out your pilot scale and you're getting rid of your smoothing over a bunch of your imperfections. Um, you know, I'm not gonna be freestyling with Real Steady Go, but I am gonna be using awesome nature shots and stuff and epic shots with Real Steady just to make it even more epic. You know, so there are reasons to use it, reasons not to use it, and reasons to disclose the use of it. Uh, and anyway, I just try to be open about it. But either way, if you have any questions, comment below. Thanks so much for watching everybody, and until next time, happy flying.